Here's what's making news now around Indiana. Connecticut-based Blue Buffalo Pet Products this week marked the opening of its $200 million manufacturing facility in Richmond. The natural pet food producer plans to create about 165 jobs in Wayne County. The facility includes a research and development center and is Blue Buffalo's second U.S. location. In Evansville, two Indiana startups took home prizes this week at the Venture Club of Indiana's regional pitch competition. Evansville-based Heliponics won first place. The company produces the GrowPod, an in-home hydroponic appliance that can grow fresh produce. Second place went to Zionsville-based Safekeeping, which offers an integrated care app for long-term care facilities. And Lute uh, Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch has announced the team of Hoosiers who will compete in the 2019 World Food Championships in Texas in October. Team Indiana, a mix of culinary professionals and amateur home cooks. And it's really the first uh, a big part of the initiative for Culinary Crossroads, a program to raise awareness of the people, products, and attractions that make up the state's culinary culture. Well, the Idle George Museum of American Indians and Western Art, it's regarded as one of the best in the world and attracts thousands of visitors from Indiana and uh, really around the globe each and every year. As the museum celebrates its 30th anniversary, a nearly $3 million grant will help it acquire a major collection of historical Native American art. And I'm pleased to be joined now by CEO John Van Osdahl. And John, as always, welcome to the program. Thank you, Gary. And uh, congratulations on 30 years. I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, this... Uh, Lilly Endowment Grant, nearly $3 million, uh, is really a big shot in the arm for a larger initiative, the Great Lakes Initiative, which uh, is very ambitious. Well, it is something new for us. We're the most significant museum of our kind in the Midwest. We're really the only museum of mm -hmm. our kind. And yet our presentation of the Great Lakes cultures, the people who have always lived here, is probably the, the smallest part of our presentation. So we uh, set out with a new five-year plan that says we're going to become the leader in presenting the cultures of the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. To do that, we needed to grow our collection of these kinds of materials. We found what we needed, we approached the Lilly Endowment and made a request and they honored that request. Wow, nearly $3 million. You have moved the items to the Idle Jorg, right? Give us, there's a lot to talk about, could probably talk about for a couple of hours, but give us a thumbnail of some of these items and what, what folks will see there. There are about 400 objects in the collection, so it's large. They are, um, they represent the 48 nations of the Great Lakes area. That includes uh, parts of Canada as well, Ontario. And the collections are rare. The items are very important historically. And this collector only wanted pristine things, so they're in great condition. Wow. Yeah. Makes it very valuable. Yeah. Uh, 30 years, as I mentioned, for the Idle Jorg uh, in downtown Indianapolis has had such an impact on our quality of life, quality of place that we talk so much about. Uh, as you look at uh, the impact, the economic impact, the tourism uh, impact, talk a little bit about that, John, because it's substantial. Well, um, over the past five years, we focused on increasing attendance by people locally. And in fact, we doubled our ticket sales largely because um, more people from our region were coming, or from the Indianapolis area. But with this new initiative, we're going to reach out to all the Great Lakes states and into Canada and encourage visitation for people who are interested in Native arts and culture, and frankly, Native people themselves. Mm -hmm. There are a couple hundred thousand people yeah. in this region who I think would love to visit us. We're within a five-hour drive mm -hmm. of a lot of major cities. Yeah, and, uh, and looking forward, uh, this Great Lakes uh, initiative, as it evolves, will lead to a bit of a transformation of the museum uh, down the road as well. Right, it's, it's um, going to culminate with a complete revision of the upper floor of the museum where our Native American art history and culture is presented. We're uh, gutting it uh, down to the bare walls and starting over. That'll reopen in late 2021. Yeah, very quickly, you've been at the museum 23 of the 30 years <laughs> of its existence. In your view, uh, the Idle Jorg, the other uh, great tourist uh, venues and museums here, how does that add? How have you seen that change and, and add and benefit quality of life here? Well, we have incredible cultural institutions. Um, they're all important and they all attract a great audience. But we're uh, really about the indigenous peoples of this region, the people who were here first. Um, international tourists love us. There's a great interest in not only the history of the West, but in native peoples themselves. 
So uh, I think every city you need something, something that's unique yep. and a special draw, and that's one role the Idle Jorg plays. Certainly is 30 years uh, in business for the Idle Jorg Museum and now a major new attraction. John Van Osdal, as always, great to see you. Thanks for being on. Thanks, Gary. All right.